The Second World War had seen new technologies implemented on a massive scale. By the end of the war, vast fleets of radar-equipped Essex-class carriers, Iowa-class battleships and Fletcher-class destroyers were in service. These ships risked becoming obsolete as a new post-war technological boom revolutionised weapon systems. Guided rockets and jet engines would see naval warfare pivot in new and unconventional directions. The guided missile reached its maturity in the 1950s and 1960s. Early surface-to-air missiles, like the RIM-2 Terrier, when combined with the ship's powerful radar, could identify and track enemy aircraft from further away than any previous air defence system. The miniaturisation of electronics also made aircraft suitable for mounting radars themselves. The increasing power of jet engines allowed for heavier payloads, and anti-ship missiles like the AS-12 or the Gabriel could be launched from aircraft and target warships that were 20 or more kilometres away. Carrier operations were also improved, with new design innovations like the angled flight deck. This allowed aircraft to take off and land on effectively separate runways, improving both safety and efficiency. Supercarriers, like the Forrestal class, entered service specifically designed to launch and coordinate the next generation of jet aircraft. Displacing upwards of 81,000 tonnes when fully loaded, these new ships were titanic in scale compared to their predecessors. It was considered futile to try and protect a warship with conventional belt and deck armour against missiles. You simply couldn't stop a half-ton missile going at Mach 3 with any reasonable amount of prop steel. Instead, warships focused on avoiding getting hit in the first place. Countermeasure systems and electronic warfare suites were introduced to deceive or scramble incoming missiles. Advanced anti-aircraft systems were also developed to try and shoot down incoming missiles, using radar and computer-aimed cannon. A combination of new systems like CIWS and surface-to-air missiles gave ships a chance against the missile-aircraft combination. Cannon were now almost entirely 6 inches or smaller in calibre. A new generation of auto-loading dual-purpose guns took the place of older, conventional naval artillery, and this shipboard artillery was exceptionally accurate, lethal, and very fast-firing compared to what had come before. A refit of the Baltimore class, the Boston was the first guided missile cruiser in US service. She had two dual RIM-2 Terrier missile launchers installed on her aft quarters, along with a new helipad. The helicopter proved to be a useful tool in scouting, search and rescue, and anti-submarine warfare. Helicopters thus almost entirely replaced float planes in the post-war period. There were no shooting wars between the great navies of this period, but middle-ranked powers fought plenty of proxy battles during the Cold War. For example, on October the 21st, 1967, Egyptian missile boats managed to hit and sink the Israeli destroyer Eilat. Armed with Soviet-made SSN-2 Styx missiles, even the humble motor torpedo boat had been transformed. <laughs>